Uh, I'm Dr. Rob Slocum. I'm Dean of Arts and Sciences. I've been here at St. Catherine College since 2008. I first came as an adjunct instructor and then later a distinguished lecturer and taught courses mostly in uh, religious studies, uh, taught a variety of courses, exploration in Christian theology, uh, quest for God, Christ and culture. Also, early on, I was invited to teach what was a new course then called Professional Ethics. We kind of put together business ethics and medical ethics to make a single course. And uh, that was uh, at Dr. Giles's suggestion. He's now uh, Vice President of Academic Affairs. But it was an exciting opportunity to do something new with a course and even putting together students from different kinds of backgrounds, different, different kinds of vocational interests. Some wanted to move forward with uh, medical related uh, healthcare fields, uh, vocations, others going forward in business and related kinds of matters. But to put them all together in a classroom to talk about professional ethics. And one of the exciting things about that was that there are similar principles that come up in the two different venues. Now, the meanings of the principles, the meanings of the terms aren't exactly the same in the two different contexts, but they're quite closely related. And so our discussion of the professional ethics issues both in a business context and in a healthcare context, I felt helped both groups of students to understand what we were doing better, to understand each other better, so it made for a much more exciting class. We would use, we do use, a case study method. So it's not just me coming in with lists of answers for students to memorize and spit back to me on a test, rather case studies that can be analyzed and discussed. So again, it's the method that's taught, not just something to be memorized and perhaps forgotten, but that by repetition of the method, practicing the method over and over and over again, it's possible for the student to come away with a different perspective on how to respond when a professional ethics issue arises. Of course, the first step is awareness, to realize that we've entered into the land of a professional ethics issue. Now, I say to the students in a class, obviously, if I'm raising a question in this class, odds are it's a professional ethics issue. This is a safe place. In other words, the worst that can happen is you fail the course. No one goes to jail because you got the answer wrong. No one's career is ruined because you got the answer wrong. But this is a safe environment to explore possibilities, to explore possible answers. And the goal, of course, is that the students come away with an ability to use the method in a variety of circumstances, to recognize professional ethics issues when they arise and to apply them. We've now widened the scope somewhat, and we call the course Applied Ethics in Society. We draw in relations to the environment, let's say. Of course, that's very compatible with our college commitment to sustainability and sustainable living. Just uh, yesterday in my class, I was talking to the students about how, in a sense, we are stewards. And here at St. Catherine, we have a considerable emphasis on stewardship how we are stewards, how we've been entrusted with the gifts that we've received, whether that means the gifts of the earth, the gift of our natural resources. We individually have been entrusted with our own gifts, our abilities to think, our ability to share what we know, to share our experiences. So we're stewards in this regard. So as to see how we have a stewardship responsibility. And it's not just about ourselves, but about those who will come after us. And we're stewards. And so in our ethical decision making, we need to consider ourselves and what's best for us and what's most fair for us, certainly, but also what's best and most fair for the rest of our society and those who come after us. So we have lively discussions in our class and people don't always agree. 
part of what we hope to engage and learn is the ability to talk about our disagreements in constructive ways so we don't have to turn our backs on people with whom we disagree but rather we can process our disagreements in ways that are constructive enabling us to collaborate with all kinds of people so it's an important class another class i was able to bring to st catherine i taught at a previous institution. I actually trained at Marquette University and uh, taught this course there for a number of years, Christ and Culture, to talk about the relationship between different expressions of Christianity and different expressions of culture. And obviously those interactions can go in very different ways. Christ and culture may collide and be at odds. Christ and culture may be at one. It may be possible to see through a cultural expression to Christ. There may be an oscillation between, on the one hand, living out of a cultural identity, living out of a Christian identity. And indeed, and certainly from a Christian perspective, this is something I welcome when I see it, Christ may transform culture so that the culture may reflect Christ more fully. These are the five models drawn from Richard Niebuhr that we use in the class to engage understandings of faith and also to engage how the Christian movement has changed through the different centuries of its experience. But it also, this teaching gives the students a perspective, an ability to be able to recognize a culture when they experience it, its organization, its leadership, its values, what makes it hold together, its special place, its schedule. And that's a very important understanding for all of us, for students, the culture of a workplace, the culture of a family, the culture of a school. And, be able to sense the, the subtleties of that, sense the differences, understand what are the official statements about a culture, understand the unwritten rules of a culture. That's very important learning. And then to be able to connect that with understandings of faith. Again, we have some very lively discussions in that class. It tends to have a, a room full of students, and I, I really enjoy those discussions and I learn from the students as well as them learning from me. We all come at this with a perspective of how can we be transformed by this conversation. Another course I teach is called Quests for God and in this we look at a variety of religious traditions, Christian and non-Christian, to see how a variety of faith traditions explore, engage their relationship with God, higher power, ultimate meaning. And so we can talk about epics of faith, we can talk about the place of biography and autobiography in faith, we can talk about wisdom literature, the place of journey. In many different ways we can see consistencies, parallels, how may God be known through daily life and holiness. And so as we explore these relationships, each student may find himself or herself able to deepen in, in his or her own tradition, in his or her own understanding, while appreciating the understandings of others. And the basic method of this undergraduate course, Quest for God, is also expressed in our graduate course that I had a leadership role in designing religion and ministry leadership, which is one of the tracks of our Master's in Leadership degree that we now offer at St. Catherine College. I'm very happy to be able to say we have three tracks in our Leadership Master's degree, and I've had some very rewarding relationships with our graduate students, both in terms of teaching the classes and in one-on-one -on -one mentoring, whether that be uh, graduate students who are interested to look at possibilities for leadership in a faith context, in a faith-based context, like working for the church, or they may go on to do other kinds of work that draw upon religious understandings, or they may simply want to deepen in their own pilgrimage of faith. But through a variety of ways, our religion and ministry leadership course offers opportunities 
for students to draw together deep reflections on faith with their experience so they may translate that synthesis into ministry, into leadership. And so I've been very pleased to be able to be a part of that process.